Welcome back to all of our wonderful listeners from around the world. Um, once again, this is a little bit of a different uh, podcast from our regular show. Um, I just wanted to make sure to get all of my thoughts recorded so that when we're doing our, uh, our future behind-the-scenes content for our show, we will have the, uh, we'll have the audio to use. Yes, we will. So, uh, we talked about the um, concept for the actual like, TV show. Yep. So, two animated segments. Yep. And one live-action segment. Yep, yep. Uh, we also talked about um, the focusing on the word future. Yep. Because it set the word future says everything that we want to say. Yes. And doesn't have, from everything that I know, um, which, you know, maybe other people feel differently, but I don't know of anyone who would say, like, the word future has been, like, politicized. Let's keep it that way because that's yeah. the last thing we need. You can't say the word future. It offends my delicate sensibilities. I am self-righteous about the future of my... Oh, my God. Well, yeah, that's my point. Is like I've been searching for a word that we can use for our campaign slogan that is not something like say, climate change, for example. Because climate, the word climate change has all these different connotations around it. You say the word climate change, it's like, oh, you just dropped a nuclear weapon into a conversation about puppies. Right. So my point is that, like, if I say... Let, let's, let's compare two sentences, for example. Yeah. Okay? So if I'm on stage, if I'm, you know, doing a speech, and I say... We're going to solve the climate crisis. Uh, people are, some people are going to like that, and some people are going to be super upset. Yes. If I say, we need to... Uh, move forward. Move forward to a better future. Well, how can anybody be like, oh, no, no, no. I don't want a better future. <laughs> no. We need to move forward in a positive direction to sustain our future. Right. We, we need to preserve the planet for the future. Yes. And what better way to embody that message than by showing our national parks? Yes. These are examples of, you know, we want this nature preserve. Yep. Yellowstone, Acadia, whatever. We want this to still be here in basically the same condition in a thousand years. Yes. There are not very many government agencies that have that kind of focus. I've been to Acadia National Park. I know. That's why I gave that as an example. <laughs> it's one of the more famous ones. I know. That's why I gave that as an example. Um, so, like I said, the, um, the focus of our message, I think, should be the word future. Yes, future, future, future. Because what do we want? We want a future of everyone having a home. Yes. A future of health care for veterans, for disabled people, for everyone. You know, but not just veterans and disabled people need better health care. Everyone needs better health care for the future. Why, yes. Why do we invest in health care? The reason why we invest is because we want the future to be better. Same thing for education. Why do we, you and I, want to create a college where anyone can go for free? Because that will improve the future. Yes, for free or alternatively, just use the government Pell Grants that would cover it entirely. Therefore, no, that's, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, using the, the free term, to the user. Free to the user, yes. Here's another way of putting it that people understand. You'll be able to go to college on the government's dime. Or you'll be able to go to college and be able to use 100% of your Pell Grants and nothing more. There you go. Um, Boil it down to a talking point mm -hmm. that, one, is completely unimpeachable, and two... It's the most amount of notes with the most amounts of demographics simultaneously to create mm -hmm. a wildfire within the 
within the media landscape right. that people will pick up on. Some people will bastardize it. Others will vilify it. Others will champion it as though it's the most goddamn thing, you know, Jesus Christ coming back from the dead, you know. <laughs> right. Well, see, the, here's the thing. There are a lot of ideas that we have that are in line with both the left and the right. Yes. So education, okay? Is something both the left and the right want. Correct. Trust me, up in Maine, it's a purple state. It's left and right centric. It's one of the best goddamn school, and some of the best goddamn school depart, uh, departments in the fucking country. Right. And when we're talking to right-leaning audiences, yep. we'll lean into the personal responsibility angle of it. Yeah. Because, yeah, you should, you being the public, you should take responsibility for yourself yep. and better your education. Yes. You know, there are literally millions of people like you who have not used their Pell Grants. I didn't need to. That's literally, literally $25,000. Yeah. That they are ready to give to you. Yep. You have not used that 25000 And what I did was I went straight to school. I went straight to work because mm -hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to do straight out the gate. I had a job opportunity. So I went straight to work and worked and learned more. Mm-hmm. Than some stuffy college, absolutely. And so, but here's the thing: let's let's imagine, okay? Yep. How many years ago would that have been for you? About ten years ago or so? Something like that. That you would have gone to college? Yeah. Uh, so, Something like that. You know, roughly ten years ago, okay? Yeah. Imagine if there was a third option, okay? Not just going to work, not just going to school. Imagine if there was an option yep. 10 years ago that the technology did not exist at that point. But imagine, okay? Yeah. Here's the third option for people who need to get into the workforce or just want to. Yeah. Okay? Imagine if there was a college degree that you could get yep. that wouldn't put you into debt that you could do at home. Mm-hmm. Why not? I mean, Purdue University um, provides a lot of online schools. Sure. Yeah, um, there's uh, Purdue, Berkeley, MIT. A lot of these places publish basically all of their lectures online. Hell, Harvard, Yale. And so what we'll do is we will work with people like MIT OpenCourseWare. Yep. Uh, they, the MIT OpenCourseWare is um, incredible. They have the lectures. Yep. And they also have the written materials as well. Yeah. So like the, the quizzes or the, um, the worksheets and stuff like that, you know, depending on the class. But uh, like the, uh, the ones from Berkeley, from what I understand, it's just the lectures. Yep. MIT Cope and Courseware, it's basically everything you need to take the course. Yeah. And so the world is waiting mm -hmm. for someone me, to come along and say, okay, so we're going to make an accredited university. Yep. And then we're going to use things like MIT OpenCourseWare so that we don't have to hire an MIT professor. That would be very expensive. But you know what's not expensive? Here's 60 lectures on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Here's all the worksheets that you need. And here are people hired to be tutors, teachers, um, assistants... It Yep. Etc. So that you learn the same information that you would learn taking Physics 101 at MIT. Yeah. And you have the same level. Of, if, if you go to MIT and you take a Physics 101 class, your interaction with the professor is just as much as you would have watching a video. Like the, the, the class will have 200 students. The, the professor cannot sit down and teach every single student or else yeah. they would have no time to do their important research. Uh-huh. So the way that they do it at those colleges is the research assistants, the PhD students, these are the people that you go to if you need help with your homework. Yes. So we don't need to hire the $200,000 a year professor. All that stuff is on YouTube for free. 
Uh-huh. So the challenge for us will be to get the accreditation board to accept that as equivalent of a college course, which I don't think should be very difficult. If, if we're giving basically the same quizzes and tests and homework, yep. then it's no different than any other online college. It's just we don't have a professor doing live lectures. We're doing lectures based on uh, professors' other work. And, and my goal is to have multiple different types of teaching tools for each class. So yeah. if someone is a visual learner, they can learn with reading and graphs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If somebody's an auditory learner, they can learn with audiobooks or lectures. Yep. If someone is a kinesthetic learner, they can learn with doing experiments or with um, more tactile, like, you know, um, uh, more, more, more tactile learning processes. I am very much a kinesthetic, kinesthetic, uh, kinesthetic learner. Kinesthetic. Kinesthetic learner. Right. Which, you know, it's kind of a vocabulary word, but for anyone who uh, doesn't know what that means, it just means, um, uh, like muscle memory, that kind of learning. Yeah. You know, being able to sit down and carve a piece of wood would be a kinesthetic task. Yes. Um, and in addition, uh, again, it has to be accredited because they have to be able to use their Pell Grants. So yes. we, we will, we will follow whatever, you know, they, they have a specific type of, um, you know, curriculum that they expect from an accredited course. But whenever we have wiggle room, we, you know, if, if, uh, instead of, um, teaching classes that, you know, by 90% majority, most students don't care about. Uh, we will give the option or the requirement, if it's, a, if it's a basics course, for courses that teach things that are important to the rest of your life. Yes. So, tax information. How, do, ba just basics of tax for somebody who is working or running a small business. The basics of tax. The basics, uh, basics of tax, and then a more advanced would be tax planning, tax strategy, investment strategies to build into the business. Mm -hmm. Basically, how right. to build an interconnected web, mm -hmm. which I learned some of that just because my family you know, was <laughs> very much into that. I did so much work for my aunt. Mm -hmm. She has a master's degree. In, she, she only has a master's degree in accounting. Mm -hmm. Or my other aunt only has a doctorate in... Um, psychology right <laughs> but like how how much could the students benefit if most students who come to our college yep most students who take our courses are taught the basics of here's how to run a nonprofit. here's yeah. how to run a small business or here's uh, not even the basics of how to run because you need to learn the steps leading up to running it. You don't just start out at the gate, you know, the CEO. You build your way up to it. Yes, darling. That's the process of running a small business. Yes. Sorry, process of starting a small business is what yes. I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, the next steps for us, okay? Yep. Uh, the next steps are going to be uh, talking to the people from the National Park Service. Yep. We're, we're going through and um, gathering a, uh, a mailing list so that we can um, talk to the individuals who, uh, who would be able to help make this happen. Yep. Because um, this, is, this is an example of a place that we can go that is... Uh, going to be, uh, they're going to be able to work with us. Yep. For filming and for um, education and you know talking to experts and stuff like that. Mm hmm. Um, and then from that, then we can use um, whatever place that we're going to. Yep. We will find things to do around that place. Yes. So, for example, let's say that we're going to um, Yellowstone in Montana. Yep. 
uh, we would say, okay, so what is around Yellowstone where we could do an event? So maybe a church, a school, a event center, VA hospital, something like that. So we wouldn't just be doing the national park events. Yep. We would also be doing events um, in the local community. So, um, because I want there to be a wide variety of, uh, of content. Mm -hmm. And in addition, I want to be able to do an event at any, uh, at any, uh, location. And what we will do is the first probably six months, I would guess, we will do the work ourselves. Yep. Or we will have somebody like Sophie or somebody do the work for us (laughs) of the event planning and, you know, okay, you're going to be at this park on this day. We've scheduled a, you know, book signing or a, you know, autograph signing at this time, you know, like, uh, or a CD, I don't know, whatever. (laughs) I mean, if it's a CD signing, we need to be there in person. Because they're coming for us, but. Right. My my point is that kind of think of it like a book tour. Yep. Where, where, um, where, you know, the author goes from place to place to place to promote their work. Yep. We would be doing the same thing. Oh, oh, oh no. Uh, of course, we would be doing a live taping. So, yeah. like, you know, okay, so we're, you know, I want you, I want you to, again, you're a very concrete thinker. So I want you to take a journey of imagination with me, okay? Mm-hmm. I want you to imagine... We go to Yellowstone. Yep. Oh, what's this? They have amphitheaters for events. Yes. I see. And so imagine it. Yes. So imagine, you know, a hundred person amphitheater Mm -hmm. at the National Park, probably outside. (laughs) Yep. Uh, And we would then present uh, our show and talk about the park talk about the topics for that day, take questions from the audience, and then probably sell CDs or something simple like that, you know, sell, sell um, recordings of the, of the version of the show for kids that they can then take and uh, show to their grandchildren or something like that. It's going to be mostly old people. Mostly old people go to national parks. <laughs> yeah. Which is great because these are... They, what? Okay. I'm so excited. You don't look very ex- you don't you do not look nearly as excited as I feel. So, what better way to reach out to the exact voters that we will need in 2028? Mhm. What do senior citizens love? America, national parks, the outdoors, education. Like, the, these are the types of things that will be our drumbeat, like every single show. We love America. We love national parks. We want to preserve the beauty of the national parks and the rest of America. We, 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 what a shame it would be for a short-sighted president to be elected who doesn't have this as their first priority. Correct. And, you know, the, <laughs> it, it, it is not difficult for me to convince people to vote for me. I have been shocked, in fact, because I was expecting it to be really difficult. But, like, if I sit down with somebody and start talking about this stuff, they go, yeah, I will definitely vote for you. <laughs> because you care about the real issues. Uh-huh. Here, here okay. Here is... The important issue, not an important issue, the important issue. I want human civilization to still exist in a thousand years. I I would like America to still exist. I would like it to be prosperous. I would like yes, me too. I would like for the natural beauty of the landscape to still exist, to not be polluted out of existence, which is where we are going. And it's very true. Do you, do you think that the people working at the national parks might be interested in having someone come and do a live show at their location that says, uh, you know, this park is going to be gone in 200 years if we, can, if we continue to pollute the same way that we're doing now? Yeah. 
Do you, do you think that those people working at that park that have made that their entire life might be interested in having someone who has that message? Uh, let's see. Somewhere between yes, 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 shut the fuck up, and yes. Right. And they will get to talk about all, you know, we'll, we'll interview the people who work there. We interview the experts, the animal handlers, etc. Mm-hmm. And they'll get to talk about all the different things that they need. Yes. So uh, this is this is one of the things that we will talk about in specific. You know, we will say, okay, you know, Ms. Johnson, you're the person who takes care of the snakes at the snake enclosure. Yep. What does this park need right now? Oh man, you know, we really need you know funding so that we can renovate such and such building. Well, great. You know, we have two million listeners in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> why don't we? Why don't we set up a GoFundMe, and our <laughs> listeners will help to uh, fix this problem that you have? Yes. Now, now, now. Here's my next question. Okay? Yeah. I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine. After we've done that a couple of times. Yep. Okay. We call up the next national park. Yep. And we say. Uh, yeah, so we're interested in coming and doing an episode of our show at your location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we just need basically a, an empty room and an hour to record. Yep. Plus, you know, a, a room and a table to sign autographs, essentially. Yep. And uh, by the way, we've raised $500,000 for the other parks that we've been to. Uh, and, you know, we've, we've renovated such and such building, we've helped them hire more staff, etc. At some point, we'll call them up and they'll go, oh, your reputation precedes you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. At some point, we'll wind up being, oh, we know who you are. Uh, it, it will probably take less than a year for them to be inviting us to come and do an event. Yes. Because... They have all of the resources that we need. Yes. We, we only need permission. Yep. We don't need to bring, you know, sound equipment. I mean, we'll, we'll bring basic sound equipment, but we don't need to bring, like, stuff to, to, build, to build a stage. They will already have a stage at the place. Yes. Uh, even if it's something as simple as a camp, uh, a place to do a campfire <laughs> with a ring around it. Like, that's fine. Uh, give me... Uh, give me, give me the stuff to start a campfire. I got you covered. Right, right. <laughs> I got this. And we could have one person show up, or we could have a thousand people show up, and we'll still do the same show. Oh yeah. You know, it it, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. What matters? And a lot of these, um, a lot of these national parks, Acadia in particular, mm-hmm. they actually have specific days where. Um, that they have event days, exactly. So right, uh, th- exactly. Perfect example that I wasn't even thinking of. So, for example, we could go on a day when they have like a food festival or mm-hmm. something, and like one of the events at the food festival is, you know, uh, hello, future president, recorded live on stage. We won't take the tour bus up to the top of the Acadia National Park. It's a mountain. <laughs> it's a terrible. Well, when we have the presidency and we have the cargo helicopters, we'll, we'll have the cargo helicopters. <laughs> no, <just joking. laughs> We're not taking a bus up. I don't even think buses are allowed up the mountain. <laughs> they are when you have a cargo helicopter. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> but um, Actually, there's a very specific way to get down the mountain. Mm-hmm. There's a very specific pattern to uh, break. Mm-hmm. So, and, and these will be ty- the types of things that we'll talk about. So, of like, you know, hey, if you want to visit Acadia National Park, here's what you need to know. Uh, make sure you have fresh brakes on your car. No, n- not, no, not fresh, factory new brakes on your car. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, and here, here is a couple of reasons why this is going to work. Yep. Okay? One, live audience. Yes. A live audience reaction is very compelling on a live show. It is. Um, You know, there's a reason why every talk show has a live audience. Mm Mm-hmm. 
two, we will focus on our core issues. Yep. Conservation, education. Yep. ADA. Yes. So, we'll do our show, Is It ADA? We'll do an episode in each park. Yes. Oh, so now there's a resource on YouTube. It'll probably be its own channel, I would guess. There now there's a resource on YouTube where for all 470 national parks, a person who is disabled can go on there and get all the information they need to know about going to that park. Correct. 470 national parks. That's what, four years of travel, basically? Mm-hmm. Travel the country for a decade. <laughs> <laughs> Becoming nationally syndicated on NPR, hopefully. NPR or wherever else we want to go. Because here's the thing. Pitching a show is difficult. Pitch, pitching a show is difficult. Because, one, the producer has to determine if your show will make money. Yes. Or in terms of NPR, if it will be popular with the listeners. Yes. You know, they did, a, they did a contest a couple of years ago to, to become a podcaster on NPR. Yeah. To, to get a radio show, and they had like a thousand entries. And they only chose one winner. So mm-hmm. if we entered something like that, we would have a one in 1,000 chance. Okay? Yep. Now, by contrast, okay, if we have a million subscribers on YouTube, which that should be our goal, is one million subscribers on YouTube yep. for the if we uh, whichever channel that we host the show on. Yes. Uh, if we have a million subscribers on YouTube, NPR will contact us to syndicate our show. Yes. It will have a section on our website of like you know hey if you want to syndicate our show on your radio station, here's who you need to contact. Here's how it works. You know. Well, we would be actively promoting it to NPR. We, we would create a petition, and we would have it signed. Yeah. Oh, petition is a great idea. So instead of a 1 in 1,000 chance, if NPR uh, has a petition with 200,000 signatures that they, the fans want our show on NPR, uh huh, you have a 1 in 1 chance. Oh, well, it still might be like a 1 in 10. Maybe, but like... But, you know, the odds ever increase in our favor, the more productivity we put in it, the more viable mm-hmm. it becomes, right. the more work we put in it. Mm-hmm. Because we can have a million subs, but that doesn't mean, you know, X, Y, and Z. A million subs plus activism and putting on the suit and tie and talking to the people mm-hmm. in charge... Right. Uh, thank you, what's-his-name, from the Obama administration. For example, okay? Yep. Here's an example of a way that we can do something unique Yep. that uh, would help the park yep. and help us as well. Yes. Okay? So, for example, let's say that we have a specific format that we have for the show. Okay? Yep. So again, the uh, you know the um, let's say that we have like a travel guide type episode, okay? So you know, here's oh no oh no 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 okay sorry I'm having it having ideas as we're talking. So the ADA show, okay? yes, the ADA show. Let's say it's on average let's say it's thirty minutes long. Yep. Okay. Put that on a DVD. Yep. And then. They sell it in the store at the National Park. Maybe. I mean, well, they'll sell it at the National Park, but that won't be a primary source of revenue. Darling, do you know how much money that would make? Let, 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 me, let me help you with this, okay? Let's say that each store, mm-hmm. 470 stores... Yep. Let's say that each store sold um, three per week. Okay. You know, it's not going to be super, super popular, I would assume. I mean, if it is, that'd be even better. But let, let's, let's go for a low number. Let's say it's, um, let's say it's uh, 
three per week. Yep. Okay, so 470 times three, that would be 1,400 DVDs per week. Okay. Now let's say that we sell them for $10. Yep. We get $5 and they get $5. That would be $7,000 a week. Okay. Multiplied by 52 weeks in a year, that would be $366,000 of money for our charity. Yes. Okay. That's just one of our 20 avenues. Exactly. Right. One of 200 avenues. Exactly. It's not that that is the be-all, end-all. It's that, like, yeah, 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 yeah. there are a thousand ways that we can monetize this. For example. Yes. All right, here we are at our event. Here's our 100 DVDs of different national parks that we've been to. Oh, you're interested in visiting Yellowstone National Park? Well, why don't you buy our DVD? And you can just see, see the experience, learn about the park. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Are there other topics we want to cover? I feel like we have a pretty good grasp on our plan for the national parks.